So we're opening Touch Designer again. What we're going to do is we're going to go back and look at the referencing and commanding of operators. So that single line example I showed where we opened, where we looked at the LFO inside the constant. That is probably one of the, the main examples of how you would use Python inline in Touch Designer. So instead of sending values via lots of channels and links, you would simply send a Touch Designer value. Uh, you would basically just link back a Python value. I'm also going to reset my window. So in the last example, we looked at referencing operators. So say I uh, let's create another LFO. I can do operator for variable one is equal to op for one zero print variable one and now I'll get the value of the LFO out. We also looked at setting other things. So we, we made a text, but let's say, for example, we want to use that value in a chop. I'm going to bring in a constant. I'm going to so variable one is equal to op LFO one zero. And then I'm going to do op const constant one channel zero is equal to variable one. So going by the logic we've used already, this should set the value of channel one to equal whatever the LFO is, but it doesn't. And the reason for that is, uh, we'll look over here, Touch Designer constant chop does not support item assignment. Results in rule of operation results in exception. So basically what that's saying is that this piece of code doesn't let us assign a value to it uh, without going too deep into why that's happening. What we need to do is think about Touch Designer differently and assigning operator values differently. So instead of seeing this as index one, this is index one value zero. So it's not just a single channel we're accessing, we're accessing a value inside that channel. So I need to tell Touch Designer specifically that I want to access the, uh, the parameter called value zero. And I want to make that equal to variable one. So now if I run it, we won't get an error. The constant one will always be updated to, to equal it without the need of linking these two together with a Python command. And in the same way, I can take this out to the main level. This will error because constant one no longer exists. But I can add in either a dot dot slash, which says go to the level above where we currently are and search for constant one. So if I come out, uh, I won't be able to actually run that command from out here, but if you think it's 9.7, run, 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 it's now equal to zero. There we go. So it's now negative 9.5. I must have got perfect on the zero. And that is probably one of the most important things to remember. If I bring constant back in, that we're not assigning channel values, we are assigning parameter values now. And this is going to be the same for everything. So instead instead of taking from a, a an operator window, we need to we're going into its individual value. So we are referencing a value and then assigning a value of different operators. What we're going to look at now is one of the main way that you can execute touch as a uh, Python commands inside Touch Designer because this isn't a natural way of doing it. If I right click on any node, it'll tell me a, a hint of what it thinks are possible outputs. And if we specifically go to the DAT page, you'll see that we get things called operator execution or chop execute. 
And basically what that means is that it will run a script specifically when something happens inside a chop. So if we attach a chop execute, and I'm going to edit in text for it because it's much easier to work over here. If we open the execute, you'll see that it has a, a number of base functions already installed. And they are that it will run something when the value changes from 0 to 1. What happens when it switches off, so it goes less than 0? Well, it's off. And if the value just changes in general. So if I attach this chop execute to the LFO, instead of me having to Alt R run the script every time, what happens if I want to just update this every time the value changes? So I'm going to do operator constant one dot par dot value zero just as we did before is equal to val. And you'll see that value change takes in a, a set number of in, uh, a set number of values based on the input chop value being the numeric value of the changed sample. So now if I click off, which I click away from this uh, active chop text, which then activates the code, you'll see that constant one is now updating in perfect time with the LFO. What we can also do is make a calculation every time this is called. So instead of constant one being equal to val, what I'm going to do is I'm going to manipulate val before it reaches that. So val is equal to val times negative 1. And now you'll see that I've made a perfect inverse of this LFO without needing to add maths chops and second nulls to then access the value again. And it can get more complicated than that. So let's say if, if val is less than 0, do something which is we're going to make constant one equal to one equal to one million else we're going to make op constant one dot power dot value zero equal to negative one but what happens if I want to get a value between this. We can add an L if val is greater greater than zero, greater than zero, and val is less than 0.5. We will make op constant one dot power dot value zero equal to. 500,000. So let's do 1,000, 500, and negative 1. Uh oh, we've got an error. What I'm going to do so I can see the, the scroll, I'm going to pause touch designer, which stops the LFO cooking. And then we're going to have a look what the area is. So line 26 in value change, unsupported upper run types for float and float. So I think simply because I don't, I'm dealing with operands, operators basically, the things that join them. Invalid syntax, that's not right. There we go. So it's just because I was trying to mix numbers and basically string characters. Now you'll see that we get three different outputs based on a single input. But now I've had to type this line three times while I'm using it once. So we can get into a good habit of doing operators as variables to then handle it. So if I did something like uh, output is equal to operator constant one, suddenly I don't need to type the complicated brackets and parentheses. I can simply do output dot par dot value zero is equal to everything. And this means that using the output variable, I have shorthand commands to any of the parameters within constant node. Uh, so we, I could do something like at the end of a value change, output dot 
parameter. Dot left is equal to one. And you'll see that it changes. Zero. Click off and it changes. So by using a shorthand variable for a, a node, we can get access to all of its parameters from one place. And this is super powerful if you know what parameters you're trying to access inside an object. So that is sort of an overview of Python, how to access the, or some basics of using variables and code inside Touch Designer, and then both, and then how to integrate your Python code into into a touch designer program correctly. And if I give you an example, so if I do something like let's do hackyrenderer.to. So let me close this. So here are some of the sort of touch designer files that I've made. And I do hackyrenderer and bring this in. I'll give you a quick overview of how I have integrated Python into a real world example, a real world touch designer use case. So this is a program that is made to uh, take a bunch of video files in and then turn them into turn them into hack queues. So you'll see here that if I bring in all of these are .mp4 files, I, I'm not going to run it because it won't run properly. Uh, without me having an output folder in here. So if I, I have a folder coming in, and if I go inside this, you'll see I have actions happening based on the file that's coming in. So the first one is, I've got something called initialize. And what this does is this is executed whenever the program is started. So when Touch Designer loads, it runs this. And the main thing that it's doing is it's setting up to render an entire bunch of videos. It says current file equal to one, and that's an index-based thing, so it goes through all the files, and make sure that it starts at less than the current amount. And then it also gets the sets a, a time variable. So the time variable controls the timeline inside Touch Designer. And that's needed when converting between sample rates and lengths. Instead of a chop execute, I use something down here called a, a dat execute. And basically what happens is every time that this folder or this select dat is updated, something happens. So when a row changes inside of it, that row being the movie name coming in, it updates the name of the movie in here. Uh, now we're getting an error. I think it's to do with the way that Mac, this was made for Windows and the way that Mac handles the file names isn't quite the same would be my best guess yeah so it's there, there's an error somewhere in the code because it is on mac rather than being on windows but it so it takes a movie name in and when the movie name updates it then sends that to this movie chop and you can see that so it sends makes sure it updates the save location using an entire st string manipulation so it's a combination of string inputs from the folder or the dat as well as adding my own to make sure it's named properly and then every time that the movie changes we update this info and so the length of it and the sample rate and what these do is we've got two different chop executes we could do this with one but I was trying to show someone how to do it uh, so I separated them out and what these do is this the sample rate one changes the sample rate of the recording as well as the sample rate of the entire patch based on that time variable that I told you about. And then this one, uh, makes sure that the, the timeline, because we're rendering a non-real time here, it makes sure the timeline is the same length as the movie that we've just loaded in. And we've also got one right the way down here that's just an execute. This isn't connected to anything in the patch apart from the timeline. And what we're doing is at the end of every frame, I'm asking it to go and check, is the end of the frame equal to the total length of this movie? And if it is, I want you to stop recording the movie and then increment current file dot par zero one equals current file dot par zero one plus one. So it goes back and then it increments this value here. And once it's done that, that then triggers the movie file to update. So if I move that to two. 
which then triggers the execute, which updates the movie name. And when that movie name updates, it updates the sample rate and length of the timeline. And once that's been done, it then starts recording the video in the upload location. And we're getting an error here is because uh, there's a folder that you're meant to make inside the source called output for it to put movies into. And then once that's running, we have this execute that then is checking to see whether the timeline is equal to the current length. And if it is, it does the entire loop. And it does that entire thing until the current file is equal or more than the, the amount of movies in the folder. And once it has, it stops everything. So that is a, an actual practical use of using Python and executes inside Touch Designer.